Some paths teach that life is suffering. Some teach that it's illusion. It's completely without value. But satyogis know that this reality created by God is for sport. It is a great game. In fact, the Greeks represented it as the Olympic game. The game of becoming a god. The game of overcoming all of those illusions of suffering and becoming a master over the mind of Maya and becoming free of all the bondages and handicaps with which one has to start the game. It is a sport designed for the most adventurous for those who know how to combine wildness and discipline. For those who know how to free their creative intelligence from all limiting paradigms of thought. It's a sport in which one must defeat the opponent known as death. And death comes to us in the form of the narcissistic ego. Do you realize that the ego is death? It submits you to the false belief that you are limited to a mortal body and thus subject to death. If you fall into its clutches and fail to free yourself in the fight club of divine consciousness, then you will belong to death. Death will be your boss. You will serve death by serving the mortal body out of fear of death. And you will not live in the blissful consciousness of the conqueror of death. But that is the art of the sport in which we are engaged. A martial art. A strategic art. An art that requires all of the powers of consciousness. and requires us to be free of all tendency to self-deception. <clears throat> to win this game, one must find a way to overcome the limits of the ego mind. <clears throat> simply because the ego mind does not contain a sufficient amount of intelligence to defeat the opponent. And this is the reason <clears throat> that one must engage in the practice of the vertical ascension of the Kundalini past the Brahmarandra, in which one's consciousness reunites with the source of our being, from which we had become disconnected 
through our forgetfulness of our true nature and our consciousness became limited to a tiny fractal sliver of its true fullness of infinite capacity. <clears throat> and so only by resonating again at the vibrational frequency of the infinite consciousness in which the particularity of the bodily, organismically locust consciousness of the ego is surmounted, can we then reunite with that infinite consciousness that constitutes the entire cosmos? And bring the entirety of that power, that shakti, the power of the goddess into our lived reality and be able to open the eye of Shiva and perceive with supreme non-duality the true nature of the game board, the field in which the play, the Kurukshetra, in which the Gita battle must be won against the enemy, which is our own blindness, our own shadow, the darkness created by the karmic traces of the failure to recognize who we are. And we are in the final round of this boxing match, of this sword fight, of this battle of life and eternal consciousness or death. And a sentence to the wheel of life and death for another cycle of time. Liberation must be won here and now in this final lifetime or never. And so every last drop of energy, of willpower, of intention must be unified in order to attain the goal of overcoming the gravity of the false consciousness and its pull toward attachment, toward phenomenal plain security, and toward all of the values that are based on fear and lack And instead, we must live in total faith and trust in our supreme nature that fears nothing and that attains the shaktipat, the descent of grace that turns the individual from a helpless, lost soul to a siddha. A siddha is a super shaman, one who has attained powers that are similar to that of most shamans, but the shaman only attains the power of plant spirits and of other limited beings in the intermediate realm of the imaginal plane. But the satyogi attains the fullness of union with the absolute spirit, the invincible almighty spirit. And so the satyogi cannot be defeated.
but only if one lives in sat, with a sat mind and a sattvic heart. And most important of all, a unified will. Because the ego will is split, conflicted, internally fragmented, and therefore it is weak. Because any particular fragment, even if it has a sattvic desire or yearning to get to a higher assemblage point, will fail because it has conflicting internal desires for other goals that keep it anchored in lower assemblage points. And so the will must be unified. And if that unification does not take place, one can never be wholehearted. And with willpower that cannot be defeated that will endure through all adversity. It is that power of will united to the chit, the free infinite intelligence of God that creates the accurate power of action in the world that overcomes all karma and brings about the shifts within the morphogenic field that produce the victory in this Kurukshetra in which we battle against the dark forces within our own consciousness, individually and collectively.